Hey there, Taurus. Welcome to your reading. This is going to be a reading for uh, the rest of the year. This is going to be a rest of the year reading bonus <laughs> thing. Uh, we're just going to look at your general energies in this first row. And you have this deer spirit. It says bring a gentle touch on it in your first row. You also have this five of swords. And, you know, part of me thinks that some people right now are kind of here to uh, get people to chill out. Right, Taurus? So... It wouldn't surprise me if, like, you find yourself being a little bit of a peacekeeper, uh, maybe in your family, friends, or even in the world in general. Kind of like the first thing that's popping into my head. And again, you know, as far as, look, at it, it's like you're going to be earning karma for what you are doing. So if you find yourself in any situations where, you know, you can bring the peace, keep the peace, whatever the case may be, uh, I feel like it'll pay off, like, big time. So definitely something to kind of like think about, but um, that's kind of what I'm getting in the first row. I do also feel that some of you have been extremely patient on something, and I feel like this come, has been coming up quite a bit for you, Taurus, where, um, you know, first off, I want to say that this card kind of reminds me of the Empress, and with the Five of Swords here, I feel like you've been very patient. I get a like sense of patience, and you do have the Strength card here. That's not where I'm getting patience. <laughs> I'm getting it right here. So, I feel like you've been very patient. I feel like the Five of Swords is saying that like if you're working on any projects or businesses, that maybe you're in this place where you're thinking about kind of walking away. But if you look at this deer on this card, it kind of looks a little bit like a baby deer. Um, not exactly, but you know, it kind of looks like it's not fully developed yet. You know, it kind of looks very young. So I feel that this like part of this is encouraging you to not give up um, whatever it is that you're working on. And again, I was saying that that card reminds me of the Empress. You have the Emperor showing up in your next row, and I kind of feel um, that's the missing piece, right? <laughs> Sometimes when I do readings and I get the Emperor and the Empress in the reading, it, it says to me maybe one of the energies is out of balance. It could be like, in again, maybe your masculine action taking side is out of balance here maybe your or but again maybe your creative side is out of balance i kind of feel both right so i think you're gonna have to look at your situation and say like what is lacking and if you can't do that i feel there are plenty of people showing up in this reading who would be more than happy to kind of like not point out your flaws i don't think this is a flaw i think it's just something that you know needs balance you know i think that um you know kind of getting a second pair of eyes especially for those of you that are about to very specifically popping into man. If you're about to give up on a project, a business, uh, writing a book, whatever it is that you're doing, I very specifically feel that this is for you. You have the strength card here. I do feel that some of you could either be dealing with a Leo or you have someone with strong Leo in your chart, in their chart coming in for you. You've been getting Leo all year <laughs> now that I think about it. So if you're attracting love, I definitely feel it could be a person with like strong Leo in their chart. I also feel that this could be what's waiting for you. Um, those are kind of the words that are popping into my head. And, um, you know, the strength card is a card of kind of showing off. She has her hands in the lion's mouth. So she's accomplishing something great by being able to tame a lion. And I feel like there are some, like, the words great accomplishments are popping into my head. But I feel you're, you need to not give up. You have the Wheel of Fortune here. And when I put this card down, I was getting, like, something to be earned. That's what was popping into my head. So anything you can do to, you know, spread the love, spread the joy, spread the happiness, keep the peace... All those things, I feel, are adding up for you, Taurus, with this energy. Uh, you also show up on this card right here. So, you know, this card, I also feel, is a little bit of your energy. I feel like it's just kind of like talking about you. <laughs> and that's pretty much it. We're going to clarify with the Oracle of the Radiant Sun. Uh, with the Five of Swords, you have this Rebellion card. We're going to be seeing a lot of this over the next, like, years. It's not like some sort of rebellion, like some sort of... Um, you know, crazy government overthrow or something like that. Although we could see that in different parts of the world, I feel. But, you know, I feel like we're going to see people uh, finding third place solutions to, you know, pretty much any problem that exists. So, you know, and, and this could involve kind of like rebelling, you know, against, you know, rules or regulations. Uh, we could see a lot of people who are like, <laughs> you know, in the world who are like, uh, what rules <laughs> about pretty much anything? And, you know, it's just like kind of leading to this transformation. I also feel like this is kind of asking you to rebel against yourself. It's like Neptune, we have Neptune and Pisces, and I keep talking about how Neptune and Pisces is a direct challenge to traditional belief. You are the Hierophant in the tarot. The Hierophant is traditional belief. So you're kind of rebelling against yourself. And what that means is like, you know, we all have rules, I think. I'm I, like, I don't, I, I'm trying to think of some 
you know, some good rules. It's like the way I was raised, I'm always early, right? Every Everywhere I go, it's like a rule I have. But like, who wrote that rule, right? My grandfather, I mean, I think it was my grandfather probably gave that to my father and it was probably his father's father's father's, right? That kind of instilled this rule. So it's like every time I would, like everywhere I worked in my life, I'd always be like 10 minutes early. You know, it's like this unwritten rule. But it's like, who says I have to follow that rule? Why can't I be on time? Why can't I be a minute late? Why can't I be 10 minutes late, <laughs> right? Like, why? And, um, you know, it's kind of like one of those things where it has caused, like, I, I look at that rule, and I think it's a good rule, right? I'm not saying it's a bad rule, but I look at it, and it's definitely caused, like, anxiety. I think in my life, in certain, because, like, if I'm, like, two seconds late, I'm, like, freaking out that I'm going to be late. And it's like, so why do I follow that rule, right? When it causes so many problems, like, when it causes a problem in my life. And, or how can I follow the rule and not have it cause a problem, right? And I kind of... um you know, again, I don't want to drag this out, but I have those. It's like those are the things that are swirling around my head for you, Taurus, where you could be thinking about these like rules, right? With the strength card, you have this adaptability card. There you go. And needing to learn how to be adaptable and needing to learn to be okay breaking uh, any rules that you have made up in your head. Because again, we all have these rules. Neptune and Pisces, again, is here to get us to break these rules for a good freaking reason. So, you know, there you go. With the Wheel of Fortune, you have this choice card. And the choice, I, I feel we have a lot of choices. For you, this is going to be a karmic choice because this right here is Libra. Well, it's actually Mars and Libra, but you know, it kind of represents Libra energy. And I feel like you need to choose to unshackle yourself. You can see like these legs are stuck in this board. And I feel like you need to set yourself free. I'm actually going to clarify this right away because what are you setting yourself free from? Mm, like, I don't think you want revenge, but if you went through a breakup or a separation, maybe you're hoping to see the person get karma or whatever, I've been, you know, I always say, and I've been saying for years that if you're wishing karma on a person, they're, number one, they're not going to get it. <laughs> if you're waiting to see a person get their karma, they're not going to get it. It's like we, when you do that, you're creating resistance and you're preventing the universe from taking care of something, right? So if you have a person in your life who you think needs karma, which I don't think we should be wishing karma on anyone, I think we, the best thing we can do is forgive and move on. It's like, think about it. We keep, you know, if you happen to believe that we reincarnate here, it's like we keep just reincarnating, repeating the same old lessons. I'm sick of banging my head against the wall. So I just forgive and move on from basically everything, right? And, you know, that's what I feel like this is kind of saying. It's like saying, if you're watching someone get their karma, they're not going to get their karma. That's only going to be for some of you. Uh, next, we're going to look at the biggest change that's coming in for you here. And here you go. I mean, literally, this card says, first quarter moon in Aquarius, trust the universe. So I feel like you need to trust that you're being led in the right direction. I also get this like adding up energy where sometimes I think we maybe feel like we're spinning our tires for a very long time in life. Maybe you've been through a bunch of relationships or you've been through a bunch of businesses and you get to a point where you're like, okay, like, is this actually going to add up to something? Is this actually leading to something or am I just uh, spinning my tires? And I feel like some of you are kind of at that point where you're saying to yourself, like, am I just wasting my time? Is this actually going somewhere? What's going on? And, you know, I have all those questions popping into my head. You have the Emperor, the Queen of Cups, and the two of wands here. Yeah, see, I think a little bit of this kind of adventurous energy needs to be explored inside of you. You know, he's standing at the top of this tower that is part of his castle. And the card itself kind of represents the fact that he accomplished everything he wants to accomplish too quickly. And he thinks that there's nothing different for him in the world. He thinks that he is kind of experiment, ex experiencing everything that there is to experience. And I think you need to experiment is where I was going with that so that you can experience new things. I think everybody needs to do this. It's like stuck energy. There's nothing like really new going on in the world. I always talk about this, how really, I mean, like the last great invention was maybe the internet or maybe the iPhone, right? Um, and, you know, yeah, people, you know, whenever I say this, people always bring up Elon and rockets and stuff like that. I'm like, yeah, those are big things. But, you know, is it is it really mind blowing? Is it really, you know, he put a car in space, which is pretty cool. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> uh, but it's like, is, has there been anything like totally, totally mind blowing? You know, some people say cryptocurrency. Yeah, that, that's that's a good one. But it's like nothing really crazy. You know, it's like been the same. Everything has been the same. And I think it's up to us. This is the problem, right? Is I think that, you know, based off the astrology, a lot of us have been looking up to this right here, emperors, you know, leaders, which really our leaders have no freaking clue what they're doing if you watch them. So, <laughs> you know, there you go. And, um, you know, it's like, so I think we're all looking up to these people. And again, this is not a political statement. It's more a human statement. As humans, I think that the astrology wants us to create these changes. It wants us as individuals to do these things because then the universe wants inspiration. I mean, I talk about this all the time, how 
I think the universe wants us all to inspire each other, and then we create more inspiration, we create more positive change, and it's just like this positive snowball. So it's like now is the time, literally right now. You you were born in a time where this has to happen right now. <laughs> so get moving, number one. But also I think that partially this kind of like adventurous, action-taking energy maybe needs to be uh, born inside of you. And if you feel like you don't know what you're doing, number one, nobody knows what they're doing. And number two, you probably don't know what you're doing. And that's perfectly fine because guess what? It's like those things where you feel like you don't know what you're doing, that's exactly what you should be doing. It reminds me, one of my favorite books of all time, The War of Art. No, I am not talking about The Art of War. Talking about The War of Art by Stephen Pressfield, he talks about when, like, the thing that you are probably most afraid to do is the thing that, you, the exact thing that you need to do. And I get that energy here with the Emperor. Um, part of me feels like, again, this rose about the biggest change that you're going to be making between now and the end of the year. I feel like you're facing some sort of fear. You have the Queen of Cups. Queen of Cups, she has this cup in front of her. The cup represents something that she really values, something that she really cares about. And so I feel like there's something, it's like there's something very valuable coming in for you here with this card. I feel like there's something you really do value. Um, and it's almost like it's tugging at your heartstrings is what I'm getting. But again, it's probably some sort of action that you're going to be taking. I also see the Queen of Cups for whatever reason. You know, this could be love. And I, there's love in the next row. But what I would say is I see the Queen of Cups and the Page of Cups in your reading here as the same person for whatever reason. So, uh, But I feel like this is a person who wants to help you. So it could be a mother. It could also be a child is what I'm feeling here. Um, or it could be like a sister or an aunt or, or something like that. But it could also just be a child, any gender, it doesn't matter. And, um, you know, I feel like there's someone who's very helpful. I don't know. We're going to look into it. With the Emperor, you have this criticism card, but this is about criticizing yourself. So I feel that, you know, I always get these cards of imposter syndrome for you, Taurus. You're like the only sign that gets them. So it's really about facing yourself in kind of, you know, which we kind of talked about, I think, earlier. I don't remember what I was saying exactly, but, <laughs> um, you know, what I'd say is I feel like you are kind of looking at yourself here. With the Queen of Cups, you have this domination card here. Um, you know, I feel like you're going to be dominating an area of your life. This card is kind of like good, bad, but I feel this is good for you. I feel that with the Queen of Cups next to the Strength card that you are going to be dominating in some area of your life. At the same time, it's kind of like one of those energies where I think you need to think big and small at the same time. I think you need to have a big goal, something that you really want to achieve in your life, but then I th think you need to kind of like focus in on like, what's the smallest bit? What Like, what's the smallest part of this that I can accomplish right now, right? Like, what's the smallest thing you can do that will get you closest to your goal? That's what. That's how I would be thinking with that. With the two wands, you have this principles card. Everybody's gonna get, everybody has had this card. This is Neptune and Pisces. <laughs> it's not Neptune and Pisces. It's it's actually Jupiter and Sag, but this to me is exactly what Ju uh, you know Neptune and Pisces is trying to get us to do, uh, to look at our principles, our rules, the things that we follow for whatever reason that might not actually be helping us. Or maybe they are helping us, but maybe they're helping us in a different, maybe they could help us in a better way or in a different way, right? And that's kind of what this reading is asking you to look at for sure. Uh, next in the area of the unexpected, you have this observer card. I feel like someone unexpectedly has their eye on you. Um, you have the page of cups going over to the ace of wands here. And so I feel that this right here, this observer card, could be someone who sees you kind of as a wish or dream come true. It could also be you. You could have your eye on someone, take it how it resonates, but you have the Ace of Cups, the Ace of Wands, and the Three of Swords. I feel like there's past hurts are getting in the way of this connection, pops into my head immediately, whether it's you or them, I don't know. I feel like someone dealt with lying, cheating, stealing, you end with the Seven of Swords. There were issues of loyalty is what I'm getting, and you have this dog card, which is loyalty. But I, you also have this bird, which is saying to me, like, this person really wants to talk to you, <laughs> or you really want to talk to somebody, Taurus, take it how it resonates. And, you know, number one, Three of Swords is actually not that bad of a card because it's temporary, right? It's raining on the Three of Swords. It's meant to represent a temporary situation. I also do feel there's healing here because you have the Ace of Cups. So if you want love and if this, if what's unexpected is love, then I would say there's actually healing in this connection. It's definitely a new connection, I would say, that's coming in for you. And either you have your eye on someone or they have their eye on you. I can't tell because of that Page of Cups being in the other row over here, it's showing up in the area of your future self. But it, if it's showing up over there, it's almost like saying you need to reach your cup out. <laughs> so maybe you need to shoot your shot. I've been getting a lot of this energy. Part of me feels that Mars retrograde, right? You know, it's kind of like one of those things where if we want something, maybe 
Mars retrograde is lazy. It, it, so the other person, you know, it's kind of like saying maybe you need to be the one to make the approach or to like, like slide into someone's DMs or, uh, you know, do uh, bump into someone. I don't know. Do something, right? Trip them, something like that. Uh, schoolyard, playground stuff is popping into my head. So there you go. Pull their hair, something along those lines. But what I would say is, you know, I feel like there's a mutual healing, but it's like someone is hurt in this situation from a past situation involving loyalty. You have this Ace of Wands, so I feel like this is very fiery, passionate, or will be a very fiery, passionate connection. The Ace of Wands represents out with the old, in with the new. You can see this castle right here is crumbling. So to me, this is an energy of out with the old, in with the new. I kind of feel like it's a very creative connection as well. Uh, I like creative connections because it's like you're building each other up. It's not this like head-to-head -head type of connection. To me, I feel like the two of you will be kind of laddering each other up in life. And usually those are like the best relationships. So there you go. But a lot of passion. And you also have the Ace of Cups here. Uh, so your emotions overflowing if this is new love, a lot of happiness. I feel like both people are uh, very happy in this connection. If you don't want love, I feel like this is talking about healing your heart. Um, so forgiving past situations, probably forgiving yourself with that criticism card for not taking action or feeling like you're not doing the right thing in life or you know whatever your self-criticism thing is saying. And again, you have the strength card. The lion on the strength card is her inner voice. It's her you know inner critic. And I feel for a lot of you that learning how to kind of tell that inner critic to shut the F up is exactly what the emperor in this reading wants you to do. So uh, let's see what's going on here for you, Taurus. With the Ace of Cups, you have this exaltation card. It's like divinely guided connection if there's love coming in for you. So I feel, you know, or if you have your eye on a person, I would just go for it is what I'd say here because it looks like a good connection to me. Uh, definitely could be a fire sign. Or it could be a fellow earth sign as well. It could also be a person who has a lot of, you know, fire earth in their chart as well, I suppose. But fire and earth definitely stand out to me here. Uh, with the Ace of Wands, you have this versatility card. I feel like it's a very flexible relationship. And I feel that's like something that you'll notice about this person. It's like they're not a pushover. Or if, again, if you have your eye on, maybe you have your eye on multiple people, right? Or whatever. <laughs> and I feel like this is saying, this person, it's like maybe they come off as a pushover, which is interesting. That's how it's popping into my head. I, I just think they're super flexible. They're not, you know, I think they stick up for themselves. I feel like they're bold, assertive. So it's like there's a difference between those two things, right? There's a difference between being confidently flexible and just being a pushover, just being a yes person, right? That's not this person. And I think that's something that will stand out to you here with this versatility card. This is the uh, sun in Gemini, by the way. So it could be a Gemini as well. Uh, with the three of swords, you have this order card. Mm, see, these two things are competing. This is what's causing an issue here um, because... This right here is things needing to be in order. This is a much more spontaneous energy. And throughout here, you have Sagittarius showing up here as well, right here and right here. Um, so I kind of feel this need to be maybe flexible in your life in general, maybe the way you accomplish things. You know, I would just be open to kind of like different ways of accomplishing what whatever it is that you're working on in general. <laughs> so not just love, but pretty much everything. Uh, in the area of messages from your future self, you have this dog. It says loyalty and determination. You also have this birds card. It says news and messages. Again, I feel like someone wants to communicate with you or you want to communicate with them. Take it how it resonates, like I said. But I feel like someone is going to be loyal to you. I feel like there have been issues of loyalty either for both of you or for one or the other here. And that could be the thing that's getting in the way of a potential connection. I feel like if you communicate, obviously that could, you know, fix things. But again, I feel like you're attracting a person who's very loyal. And and again, if if not, it's it's you being loyal to this person. <laughs> so there you go. You have the three of swords, the page of cups, and the knight of swords. Yeah, I definitely wouldn't rush. Again, if you're approaching a new person, I wouldn't be too pushy with this person. They might be a little, again, I, I just get this feeling of this person being hurt recently. So they might not be like 100% open to something, but I feel like they'll talk. I feel like they'll go on dates and things like that. And I actually feel like they'll warm up to you very, very, very quickly because there's a lot of passion here, Ace of, Ace of Wands. But there might just be like a little bit of, you know, a little bit of something to overcome here is what I'm picking up on. I don't know what else to say. I also feel like your future self is saying, make sure that you're investing in long term situations, not just in love. I'm talking about in business, in your health, in everything. I know I say this all the time, but Uranus and Taurus, Uranus and Taurus doesn't like anything quick, right? It wants us to come up with long term permanent solutions to pretty much anything that we're dealing with. So I feel like you need to stay focused on long term solutions. 
you have the page of cups here so definitely could be an admirer uh, i also feel this is talking about you know again whatever you've been working on which we've been talking about this entire reading and it's like like you know the, he has that fish in the cup and that fish might not exist it might be part of his imagination so i kind of feel like you're dreaming of something you're dreaming of creating something the vision isn't clear it's like cloudy to me you know, if you're like wanting to start a business, maybe you don't know exactly what to do. Maybe you don't know, maybe you don't exactly have a plan, right? And this is where play comes in to this reading, which we actually see right here. Seven of Swords. Seven of Swords is a card of lying, cheating, stealing, of course, but really it's a card of being tactical. It's a card of tactics and it's also a card of play. He has these polka dots on his, his cloak here and polka dots in the tarot represent needing more fun. Sometimes I think if we want a business, maybe we know like, hey, you know what? Like I knew when I was 13 years old, I worked on a vineyard. I knew from that, like literally like two weeks in, I knew that I never wanted to work for someone again. <laughs> I literally started my first business when I was 16 because I knew that I would never want to work for someone and um, except for myself. And, but again, it's like, I didn't know exactly what I wanted to do, right? So I feel like we need to explore. I think we need to play if we don't know what we want to do. And that's perfectly acceptable. Is it going to be perfectly acceptable to the people in your life? Hell no. People are going to tell you you're crazy. They're going to say all these things, but your job is to turn them off. It's to not listen, right? Because has anyone who's not crazy accomplished something uh, amazing? Uh, probably not, right? So let's see what is going on here. Uh, with the Seven of Swords, you have this organization card. Like, I feel like you will be getting organized. A lot of Virgo energy in your reading. This is Capricorn, but also, um, uh, to me, this kind of leans more Virgo. And <laughs> uh, I feel like that you could be kind of like organizing things that are in, in business or work or career. Uh, with the uh, Page of Cups, you have this escape card. Mm, like, I feel like we need to learn to sit with energies, is what I would say. I don't think we should be escaping from things. Like, if you're first instinct is to run away from something. You have this card and the Knight of Swords. Like I was saying earlier in the reading, I kind of feel that for you, it's like the fear is actually resistance. And like we talked about in the War of Art, you know, I was talking about that book and he says that we should be probably moving towards our fears because really it's excitement. With the Knight of Swords, you have this speculation card. Uh, a lot of the speculation energy, I think we should just try things right now because if we come up with any ideas, you're going, you are speculating, but there's all, it feels really good with Neptune and Pisces as well to dream, to just be like, to look at something up here <laughs> and be like, oh, that looks so amazing. This fantasy that I have in any area of my life, right? And so you could be building these kind of castles, these dream castles, right? In your brain, but your job is to try to bring them down to earth. That's what Neptune and Pisces wants us to do. Uh, we're going to look now. I'm just going to pull six of these uh, random oracle cards for random messages now just to see what comes up here. Uh, you have this learn when to say no, avoid clutter, slow down, and quiet your mind. I was kind of saying something about ne needing like a nice person or being a pushover. I was talking about someone else, but it is interesting because, you know, I kind of feel like this is saying don't be a pushover this month or for the rest of the year. Uh, you have this be patient, uh, trust that, uh, trust the wait, everything is coming together. So there you go. Uh, that's why I would explore at the end of the year here. It's like, maybe things don't need to be perfect right now. Maybe you just need to play around. Maybe you need to experiment, try new things, right? Because that's probably what the time is for you. Uh, next, you have this, you are stepping into your highest divine life path. Exactly. I feel like you are definitely stepping into your true power here. Uh, next, these are career cards. This says uh, unseen, um, though you don't see it now, there's something better. And I definitely feel like there's something better coming in for you here. But again, you're going to discover it through play. Like I said, I can't stress that enough. Like, especially for those of you building a business or looking for a new career, looking for a new job, it's not going to be something stiff, organized. Um, <laughs> it's, it's definitely not going to be organized, right? I, I think it's going to be extremely like a very spontaneous type of position. Maybe it's a position that requires you to um, travel throughout your day. Maybe it's a position position that requires you to go, maybe you work at a bunch of, you know, maybe it's a, a company that has a bunch of different locations, right? Maybe you have to kind of move around in the area a lot or something like that, you know? So I get that. Could also just be a job where there's, you're, there's just like different roles from day to day, but I feel like it's going to be great. And it's going to be something you're going to learn a lot from. Uh, you have this mistakes card. I mean, literally what I was saying, I mean, you know, to me, experimentation is all about making mistakes. But these mistakes are good mistakes, happy little accidents, right? <laughs> and we need to make these happy little accidents or else we will never learn. 
Uh, you have this transporter card. It's crazy that I was saying traveling around. I mean, literally, some of you could be like working for UPS, um, you know, or USPS or FedEx or something like that, delivering packages for Amazon, maybe something like that. This uh, says uh, things will manifest much sooner than you think as well. So I love to see that. Some of you could be like traveling, uh, you know, it could be like getting travel jobs, pilots, uh, you know, um, stewardesses, things like that are popping into my head with that energy. So love it. Uh, finally here, Taurus, we're going to pull three cards. That one flew out. <laughs> so there you go. We're going to be pulling three cards now. Um, and each card is going to, I mean, sorry, uh, I'm going to put all three together for one question. So if you have a question, great. Feel free to pause the reading now and think of your question. If you don't have a question, that's fine too, because I'm just going to put it all together as like a personalist reading. So pause now and think of your question. But you have the Two of Pentacles, Eight of Wands, and the Justice card. This is about making a decision. So I feel like once you make a decision, things are going to move very quickly. If you're between two things and that's what your question is about, I mean, I know this sounds crazy, but really, can we ever really make a wrong decision in life? I don't think we can make a wrong decision because you made the decision. So there is no wrong decision. Once we figure that out, then life becomes much, much easier. And people always like bring up examples like my aunt decided to walk down the road and a rabid dog bit her on the leg and then she got ran over by a bus and broke her hip. And I'm always like, okay, yeah, but who knows what that led to? Maybe that led to your aunt sitting in bed for like six months and maybe she learned a new skill and became a millionaire. So it's like, we shouldn't be judging our situation no matter what, even if it's if something crazy happens like that. That's never gonna happen to anyone, what I just said, never. So, you know, again, can we make a wrong decision? No, we can't because if we take advantage of the situation, who knows what it'll lead to. For others, I feel like you could be getting legal news and you could be wrapping something up uh, legally here. I'm also getting something about balance, of course, two of, cu two of pentacles, justice, uh, two cards of balance and balancing things out. So I feel like there is a lot of success coming in through uh, putting your energy into the right things. But um, it's one heck of a reading, Taurus. So thank you for being here. Really appreciate it. Make sure to watch your sun, moon, and rising for a full picture of what's going on for you at this time. But thank you and definitely enjoy your week.